Cancer is a devastating disease. It can disrupt and destroy a life overnight. With over 600,000 victims each year, it seems it could strike any one of us at any moment. On today's program, you'll meet a man who was on top of the world enjoying a flourishing career as a professional model and international basketball player. He had just come to the United States when tragedy struck. In a matter of days, he went from living a dream life to fighting for his very life. He survived, but lost his ability to walk. Now, though he has mostly recovered, he still struggles with the fear of the cancer resurfacing and taking everything away from him again. Today, we're going to meet and help Matthew find the motivation to pursue his dreams. I'm Creflo Dollar, and this is your world. Our guest today was stricken with Hodgkin's disease and at the prime of his professional modeling and basketball career, he was eventually paralyzed as the disease invaded his spine. The doctor said he wouldn't survive, but he did. After six months of treatment and prayer, his cancer disappeared. Today, our guest is struggling with the fear that his cancer will someday return. And we're here today to help him sort it all out. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Matthew to your world today. Matthew, thank you, thank thank you, thank you. Thank you. be seated here. Oh, I'm glad you're here, man. I, uh, I hope today we can create a ministry tool that will help people to really understand, first of all, the process that you have to go through to get to a certain places, certain stages as a result of going through cancer. Um, uh, I'm going to relate with you on, on my journey through cancer and also, you know, fighting that fear of it returning again after hearing the doctors tell you, well, it'll be back five years. That's what I was told. And we call it your world because we're going to go into your world. You're going to take us and we're gonna to come together and manufacture and preach a sermon that's gonna help set people free. Thank so you. we're gonna do some tag team preaching today, okay, brother. I'm, I'm okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> well, look here, uh, let's, let's start off with your story. The career of modeling, yes. basketball, and you get this news. I was on the top, I was trying my best to do everything possible. Um, you know, as a young kid, we all have a dream. Sure. And um, I ended up to be modeling, not really because I wanted to be a model, but it looked like my face was some kind of, you know, working in the marketing and uh, I was still playing basketball. Yeah, I was like trying to challenge myself. I said, if I want to get to the top, I need to play with the best players in the world and it's just America. Mm -hmm. So I just left everything behind me and then, you know, the comforts, my security in Europe and everything. And um, I just started the school in Arizona and, um, train a lot um, because I know it's tough, you know, yeah. it's not easy. So you were born in Belgium, in Belgium? Brussels, okay. yes. Okay. So you make your way over here to the United States. Take it from there. Well, suddenly uh, I started to losing weight. I knew um, the training that I had at school was a little bit more um, consistent, more hard than it used to be in Europe. And this is the best way to get to another level. You need to train hard. Yeah. But I started to losing weight drastically, like two, three pounds a week. Mm -hmm. um, right now I'm skinny, but <laughs> I used to be a little bigger when I play basketball. And uh, 
uh, like this sweating in bed at night times and, and I was starting to feel weak more and more and, and I didn't know what happened. So I spoke with my counselor for the school and he said something is going on. So maybe we should go to see doctors and they said, okay, well, Matthew, you need to go in Europe to be treated because your doctors is there. And so you had to go back to Belgium for treatment? Yes. And tell us about the day you discovered that you had cancer. Well, I came back and um, when, when you go outside of your country for a while, you kind of losing your citizenship. Mm. So it's like you're not, you know, resident over there. Mm. So you're losing kind of like advantage, like the health care and everything. So when I came back, I was forced to go to kind of a social uh, hospital. Mm. And uh, I was trying to explain that I was always in shape, training, and I feel like I was losing weight and uh, trying to explain myself, but I'm not a doctor. So when you explain your, your symptoms, it's always more, I don't know if it's crazy, but it looks like more like, okay, well, what's going on with these kids? Mm -hmm. So they didn't believe me. They didn't believe you? They, no, what they, did they, did they test you properly? No, they just gave me some painkillers and they say, well, you need to come back in two, few weeks and we'll see what's going on. They ran no test, no, no blood test, test? No test at all. I was in the United States playing basketball division one. Mm -hmm. I was modeling and I was starting to be like almost less than 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. And um, people told me, doctor will say that I will have nothing. And then I remember I was crying because I, I knew something was going on with my body. I always be in shape, never drink, never smoke. And I, d I couldn't understand why nobody understand me, why nobody was paying attention to me as a person, as a human being. Wow, man, this, this is... Uh... Uh, it's almost shocking for me to hear that it, people that different. are supposed to be caring for you, where, where was the care? It was really like painful because I, I couldn't understand. I never heard anything like this. I never see anybody having the same symptoms. And um, my friend drove me home when he was staying because I didn't have a place to stay, so I was staying with him. And on my way home, I saw a sign with another hospital. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why don't I don't go to these hospitals? I don't have anything to lose. They say I'm crazy. So I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. And um, I went there to the emergency room, and after five minutes, the, the nurse was, was calling doctors. So she checked my legs, you know, the reaction, the hammers on your knee, mm -hmm. and nothing was moving. So I was in pain, so they gave me like a shot, and they said, we're gonna do some tests and random tests tomorrow morning, because I, I came really late night. And uh, I woke up the morning, and it was in the rooms upstairs, and doctors came in my rooms, and they said, Matthew, we, gotta, we have to do a, a surgery and uh, in your spine. I mean, I, I remember that moment where two months ago, I was in Arizona playing basketball. Then I was, went through this back in Europe, no place to stay, and people like assuming that I was crazy. So this is something is it, it's hurting me because when someone say you hurt, you crazy when you hurt. You, you cannot explain, you know. It's just so it it, it hurt me a lot because. I knew I had something going on. Mm -hmm. I knew it was, it was real pain. I was not acting up. So um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just getting a little bit emotional. Cause, no, that's okay, cause, man. Because this is a part of um, when people care. You know, this is the first time someone was caring me for, and those doctor was amazing. I mean, the Dr. Halar and, and, and all the team in, in uh, UZ Brussels was amazing. It was really like great people. So they take care of me. I did the surgery in the morning. Um, I didn't know what's going on. I didn't know about, you know, a so back you had, surgery. You hadn't, you hadn't received any diagnosis, any specific oh, diagnosis? Oh, no. They find out they have like a, a ball in my spine. who was locking the, the blood to flu through my, my spine. And they didn't know what it is. But there was something in my body that didn't need to be removed. And I woke up the next day in my rooms and they said the surgery was good, but we moved. We found something in your spine. And, and I, I say, okay, but you're going to be paralyzed. So what are you talking about? Now, did the surgery have a, a lot to do with uh, the paralysis that attacked yes. your body? Yeah. And did they uh, give you information as far as, you know, the paralysis would be temporary? Oh, no. They, they so said it's probably going to be like um, permanent. That's what they say. Like when you have those kind of surgery in your back, yeah. you don't walk no more. It, it, you have a chance to one million to walk. So it's either deal with the cancer versus being paralyzed for the rest of your life. It was both of them. Wow. Yeah, were you, were you mad at God or confused or what, what, what I was, was mad. Yeah. I was mad at God. Yeah. And um, I knew a lot of people, you know, know someone who'd been through cancers and chemos or radiation, mm -hmm. but my chemo was, was really tough because okay. 
it was stage four. Yeah, yeah. So I was mad about God, to be honest. Um, were you afraid you were going to die? So when they push the chemos more and more longer, and then they say to my mom that he's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. At this point, I was 30 years old. So you're in shape, you're 30 years old, and you're going to realize that you're going to die in a couple of weeks, maybe months. I was already in hospital since almost six or seven months. So I started to pray because one of my friends is, is really like someone like who pray a lot. Who, he was really a supporter, guys. And um, he told me, you know, God don't punish anybody. He, he didn't bring you cancer. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have it. God doesn't give you what he doesn't have. And, and this is a very important point. A lot of times, get, he gets the blame for stuff that he's not even involved in. Mm -hmm. And God can't make you sick because he doesn't have sickness. There are, no, there are no angels in heaven with the flu. And it didn't come from God. What, com what comes from God is, is healing and provision and all of those wonderful things. And sometimes when we have the wrong impression mm -hmm. of who God is, it affects how we can receive from him. So thank God for this friend who gave you the right impression of who God is because, you know, things will turn around once you recognize that God is not against you but he's for you. I want to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to continue with Matthew and, and find out about the turnaround. What happened to turn this whole situation around from hopelessness to hope? We'll be right back. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Welcome back. So Matthew, something, something changed, something turned. You, you left the expectations of the doctor uh, where death is concerned, but you're here. I'm here. What happened? It's, it's a lot of help. Like I said, I pray. I pray every day now for be thankful to be able to walk. Because again, um, that's why my story turned out to be a little bit inspiring and crazy. I, I didn't want to be a role model or whatever, but um, I'm, I'm involved with kids and training in basketball. Mm -hmm. And um, some of those coach knew some newspapers and I was in the newspapers and I started to be involved with explaining people about, you know, being paralyzed, walking again, the meaning of life, be thankful and goals. We all, everybody put some goals somewhere. Sure. And um, sometimes you have to be realistic and having a plan B. Sure. I didn't have a plan B at that time. Mm -hmm. And now you can share that with others. Yes. How important that plan B is. Let's talk about fear. Mm -hmm. Here's my definition of fear. It's when you f f don't or will not believe what God has promised. In other words, God promises health and healing, but I'm afraid that what God promised won't come to pass to recall what you have gone through, I can certainly understand the knock on the door where fear is concerned. Mm -hmm. But how you answer that is gonna determine whether it continues to make progress in your life, in your mind, find a seat in your soul, or how can I walk free from fear? And so I'll say this, Matthew, I don't believe a person can effectively deal with the spirit of fear without God. Because fear and Satan go hand in hand, mm -hmm. just like God and faith go hand in hand. Fear is the faith of the devil. Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. And so I'm saying this because, again, five years it was supposed to come back. And I'm thinking, I've got to stand up to this. I've got to make a decision of quality. No, I'm not going to receive that. I choose to believe what God says, and this will not happen to me a second time. And so I begin to put it in my mouth. 
This will not happen to me a second time. I am forever free from cancer. Out of that decision, uh, a passion came to begin to research and to accept responsibility for my own health. That never again will I allow uh, the doctors to be responsible for my own health. I'm going to be responsible for my own health. And it's just amazing because once you do that, fear doesn't have a, a grip over your life anymore. And I'm telling you the truth, man, my trust is totally in God. I meditate on who I am according to his word. I meditate on the health that he promised me, the healing that he's provided for me. And I begin to renew my mind so I can prove that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Now, I got to be honest with you, when this thing first started, and I recognize the fear. I mean, brother, if I was reading the Bible and saw death, I'd break out in a cold sweat. Mm -hmm. Or if I had to go ride by a graveyard, I'm thinking, oh. Yeah, that's, that's, that could be me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I'm thinking living in fear of cancer returning is no way to live. So, so how am I going to deal with this? I knew it was a process. And I knew the it process is. was I've got to renew my mind. I've got to clean up the areas where I'm ignorant about the subject, it can not and will not govern my life. And so now, you know, I'm in a pretty intense exercise program. My supplementation is, is, is pretty yes. intense. I go through certain treatments so I can maintain a level of health and I try to keep myself in, in balance. I am not going to live my life being afraid where cancer is concerned. That's what happened. I, did, I had a checkup recently to the hospital and I was scared, scared to go, scared to what's going to happen if they find out again he came back. I'm, I'm here now, I'm, I have a new life and I'm, I'm playing basketball again. Uh, uh, no, so I push it a little bit forward yeah. and then finally I decide to go check myself and everything was fine. So mm -hmm. like you say, fear is just, just not a good, good thing. Yeah, you, you can't have, you can't have it in your life. And so while I can expose myself about all the information of what cancer can do to me, I am also going to expose myself to what God has already done, and I'm going to renew my mind, and I'm going to get in there, and I'm going to employ the word into my mouth. I'm going to speak what I believe. I'm going to think what I believe. I'm going to get in this word, and I'm going to totally trust God and rely on him as if he is the only hope that I have. I begin to do things differently. And I, don't, I won't bore you with my extensive, very radical <laughs> protocol, but it's very radical. I can't do, even eat, what other people can because I have got to pay attention to what would happen if I begin to go back to my old diet and my old stressing over something and not going to do it anymore. And I plan on living to a, at least 100 and then renegotiating, but I don't plan on looking <laughs> like a 100-year-old dude. Okay, I signed too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking like a 100-year-old dude. Um, and for you sharing your story like you're sharing it, I want you to understand that fear is real, but fear can be dealt with, but you have to deal with it every single day. Every time fear comes through your mind, you got to cast it down. I try. That's where the real attack is right here. And you have to learn how to be a good custodian over your thought life and, and really make your thoughts submit to what you believe. And sometimes I had to do that every minute and then it went every 15 minutes and then it went every 30 minutes. I remember walking up and down the hallway because I couldn't close my eyes without seeing a casket and all that other mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But over time, as you do that, you take authority over that until all of a sudden Satan's got to negotiate whether or not he would even put that thought in your mind because he's got to deal with how you're going to respond to him. Well, you know? th thank you for those words because um, I don't say that nobody told me that the same way, but um, it's always good to have some right word to, to go through and it's going to help me. Um, I don't make promise that it's going to work tomorrow, but I'm going to work on it um, fierce and um, hopefully I will be more you know, open to life and, and, and not be scared to go to a a casting for the next whatever and uh, and then enjoy life more because um, fear just blocked me to stepping to whatever's coming. If you will begin to employ some of the things we talked about today, there is nothing that you lost where God is not going to restore it back to you sevenfold. So begin to pursue the sevenfold return. 
it, it's, not, it's not over. You, you're not in the casket and you're not in the ground. No, I'm not. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get it back. Get it back. It, dream bigger. And, and go for it, man. And, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. When, I didn't know what to expect. I, I thought you were going to come out in a wheelchair. Did y'all too? And he came pimping out here, and I'm like, what, 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 what happened? And he walked out here, still look like a Vogue model, right? Still. I don't, I don't even know. I don't, but you know. So he has no victory over you. But we cannot, we cannot tolerate fear. It cannot be taught. Get angry at it. No, I'm not going to be afraid. God hadn't given me the spirit of fear, but love and power and a sound mind. I look forward to us, if you'll agree, Matthew, I, I don't know when they're telling you it's come back, but I want you to come back on the show and, and say, listen, the fear is gone. I'm in perfect health. Uh, I got this kind of modeling contract. I'm doing this because you're sitting on a couch where God has done a lot of miracles. Amen. And there is no way, there is no way you're going to leave this planet and not get back the sevenfold. The Bible says if you catch the thief, you can make him repay you seven times what was taken. Mm -hmm. And so I declare in your life a sevenfold restoration. Amen. Seven times. Um, no more fear. Thank you, I will. No, that's where you I'll start. Work. No more fear. And live your life and wake up with the energy and the love and the excitement that you have and go get it. Ain't oh, nothing yeah. you can't do. I do that. I do that. Ain't nothing Every you can't do. Um, you, you speak three languages. Yes, sir. And, and you know, I, three languages and if you got tongues, that's four. <laughs> uh, you, you're, you're here in the United States right now? Yes. I'm living in Atlanta since a year. You're living in Atlanta? Well, I mean, what is Atlanta except what, uh, the Southern Hollywood or something like that? Yeah. Do, do, and they got a new, um, like a B-team type basketball thing that's in the South that just built this facility and stuff like that. And plus you can coach and all that other kind of stuff. And you got accent. People over here like accent. When I go somewhere, I have an accent, but I don't know I got an accent. I got <laughs> an accent to you right now, right? Like listen to this country joker talking to me, you know? I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord, man. And come back and let us know. The God of the turnaround is working for you right now. I wish I had the book on um, overcoming fear, a book I wrote a while back. Maybe we can send it to Matthew and he can start reading uh, that book because that, that really helped us out a lot. And we want to teach people how to never be afraid again. How to never be afraid again. Yeah, I'd like to give that to, to, to Matthew. I want him to start on it because this works. Is that a CD series? Can I have that? I, I, give it to Matthew. I, I want him to get to working on this fear now. Now. Thank you. Get to work on how to never be afraid. That's what we're talking about, right? It is. How to never be afraid again. Get started on that, and I can Thank find the book so and get yourself full of Thank the Word you. of God on that. Thank Do you, you guys appreciate our guests? <laughs> you know, God has provided us with a world of opportunities which are ours for the claiming, if we claim it. It's important that you make the most of the life that you were given. And when you recognize your true inner potential and the promises God has given us in his word, you'll realize there is nothing to fear. It's impossible to live a life that you're looking at things in life and you're full of the fear and the fear begins to torment you. How can anybody live that kind of life? But when you live a life that's pleasing to God and you go against the fear, then you can have victory in your life. Remember, God's standard of excellence is different from ours and we never, ever, we can never fall short in his eyes if our actions are led by the word and if we understand his grace. I wanna thank my guest Matthew for joining us today. And listen, if there's something going on in your world and you need help or if you know someone who needs help, please reach out and connect with us online at yourworldwithcreflo.com. Stay connected with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and know that I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you next time right here on Your Work.
Today, you met Matthew Nkosi, who was stricken with debilitating cancer while in the prime of his modeling and basketball career. And though he was healed through the grace of God, he has been living with the fear of the disease returning. This relentless fear has kept him from moving forward and actually living his life to the fullest as God intended. What's holding you back? It may be a fear of inadequacy or a fear of failure, or maybe you've been rejected or judged harshly in the past and you're afraid it might happen again. What's keeping you from living your best life? It's time to learn how to never be afraid again. In this two-part CD set, Creflo Dollar shows you how to effectively use God's word of faith so that you can be released from the paralyzing misery of fear. But that's not all. Call today and you can receive the full unedited DVD of today's program, Dare to Dream Again, now in its entirety. Listen closely to Creflo Dollar's words of wisdom for your own life, found only on this DVD. When you understand faith and the power of God's word, you'll never walk in fear again. So that's the two-part series, How to Never Be Afraid on CD, and the uncut full interview between Creflo Dollar and Matthew Nkosi, both for your tax-deductible donation of only $20 or more. Call or go online right now to receive a life-changing collection to help you gain freedom from the fear that's been holding you back in life. Our operators are standing by. Call right now. It's time now. It's time now. You have been where you have been long enough. It is time now for you to come up to the level of the supernatural where God is calling you. Who can be against you when God has committed himself to be your God? Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar for a day of healing and prayer at the 2019 Detroit Change Experience. He says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. I can go before my God. I can go straight to God, to the throne of his mercy and receive grace in every time of need. There will be three power pack sessions, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. on May 3rd, 2019 at the Cobo Center in Detroit, Michigan. This is a free event, but seating is limited. When visiting New York and Atlanta, join Creflo Dollar at World Changers Church International. Service times are Saturdays at 6 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us online at creflodollarministries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.